So think about what I say, and then let's pray for a minute. God chose us to be in relationship with him even before he laid out the plans for this world. Ephesians 1, 4. Do you believe that? Do you believe before the foundation of the world, God knew you would be here and that he wanted a personal relationship with you? Oh, but Lord, there's something uniquely wrong with me. Well, did he say anything about that? No, it's not judged by anything other than he loves you. And the unconditional love of God cracks through like that frequency that opens that vault of lies. So, Lord, that's what you pray now. Lord, in any way that I don't believe you want to be in personal relationship with me, I ask you to take that lie out of my life right now. Cause me to awaken to the truth of your word that I have believed a lie that I'm less than, that I'm not who you say that I am. He wanted us to live holy lives characterized by love, free from sin, and blameless before him. That's his telos. That's the goal. That's what we're shooting for. Blameless before him. Characterized by love. Free from sin. He destined us to be adopted as his children. Now wait a minute. If you believe this, you're not going to fall for the false identities that the world is trying to give you. Because there's a spirit of adoption that cries out, Abba, Father. Come on, by faith, just lift up your arms and say, Lord, break open that vault. Take that lie out of that vault that I'm not loved by my father, that God is like my earthly father. No, he's not. No, he's not. God is a perfect father. And the spirit of adoption cries out, Abba, Father, Lord. And by faith, by faith, we receive that love. By faith, we believe and receive that we are loved by you and that the word of God is true. He destined us to be adopted as his children through the covenant Jesus the anointed inaugurated in his sacrificial life. If you need a reason to praise God, there's a good one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you came and voluntarily submitted your life. And when he stood before Pilate, Pilate said, don't you know that I could take your life from you right now? Jesus said, you can't take anything, nothing. You can't take anything. I voluntarily lay my life down because I love Trisha Festa in Patterson, New Jersey. And then Peter loved Trisha Festa in Patterson, New Jersey. My oh God. We really better get a hold of this one because if you're believing a lie, that will cancel the power of the truth. You gotta know, you gotta know that you believe it because it's true. Amen, thank you, Lord, for that for that plan that you have for me. His pleasure and his will is for us. That's what he wants. He wants us to prosper. Ephesians 2, you're no longer called outcasts and drug addicts and wanderers and lowlifes and liars and, and the things that the drugs would make people do. That, that was identified by the devil and he accuses you and says, that's who you are. And you say, no, that's who I was. That's not who I am now. I am who God says I am now. And that's a lie, S Satan. That's only who I was. That's not who I am now. No more outcasts and wanderers, but citizens of God's people, members of God's holy family, residents of his household, so that I'm being laid. Peter Roselli is being laid on a solid foundation with Jesus the anointed as the cornerstone. The creator of the universe is our firm foundation. Before Abraham was, Jesus said, I am. I was with the Father in heaven. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Woo! In the beginning. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm being built on that foundation. The building is joined together stone by stone. Each one of us, we, we don't value each other enough. Stone by stone, this building is coming together. All of us chosen and sealed in him, rising up to become a holy temple in the Lord. What a picture that is. I know I'm not perfect, but you used Nehemiah to take the burnt stones and rebuild Jerusalem. So no matter what my past looks like, it doesn't matter to you. I'm telling you, sometimes it's a better thing because you know what it's like to be in that pit. And when God brings you to the other side, you have authority to help other people get out of that mess. And then this is a prayer that Paul prays in, in Ephesians 3. Say it out loud with me, okay? Father, out of your honorable and glorious riches, strengthen your people. Fill their souls with the power of your spirit so that through faith, the anointed one will reside in their hearts. May love be the rich soil where their lives take root. May it be the bedrock where their lives are found. 
Now meditate on that for a minute. Come on, he was praying for you. And we're all praying for each other that this is going to be a rich ecosystem for the life of God, not corrupted by the, by the thoughts of the world creeping in. Lord, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And Jesus prayed. He said, Lord, uh, Father, I pray for them, not that you would take them out of the world, but that they would be kept from the evil one and that they would be a weapon, right? You're a weapon in the hand of God to destroy the works of the devil. But maybe that there's a lie in you that's still in that vault that is believing that, not by what you say or, or what you say you believe, but, but by your actions. Might not be proven that you believe it. So when you have, let's just say as an example, a prodigal child and you're believing for them to come home, set a place at the table for them, even though they're in another state, because it shows that you believe they're coming back right? I'm not saying religious, mechanistic. I'm just saying my actions should agree with what I say I believe. And I'm believing he's coming back. So there's a place at the table, at the dinner table for him or her. Surpassing everything anyone ever previously experienced. God, may your fullness flood through the entire being of each and every one of us. This is the last one, okay? You good? May God, sorry, God, may your fullness flood through their entire beings. Go ahead, ask that. Lord, may your goodness flow through my entire being. Let it be like a CAT scan in the spirit that anywhere there's a, there's a, a cancerous, precancerous cell of thinking that you will reveal it and it will be flushed out of our system. That my immune system will strengthen as I memorize your word, as I spend more time with you, as I turn away from the things of the world. I will be strengthened in you, Lord. And that, that will help me to do what James said. Watch what comes out of my mouth. Now to the God who can do so many awe-inspiring, immeasurable things, things greater than we could ever ask or imagine through the power that work in us, to him be all glory in the church and in Jesus from this generation to the next forever and ever.